Mental Fox here with more Skyrim. Thank you for joining me again. We're in the mind of Pelagius the Mad, I think is his name. And uh, we're standing here looking at this guy uh, who goes by the name Shiagarath. He is the Daedric Prince of Madness, I believe. And uh, we are now currently tasked with trying to figure out how to get out of Pelagius' mind. And we're supposed to use this thing called a uh wabajack to escape from his mind whatever the heck a wabajack is um i i mean it says to use it i hopefully i have it equipped because um i can't get to my inventory from here so um yeah i can't bring up my skills menu or my magic menu or anything like that so uh yeah uh one thing i do know is that i've got this stick and i guess maybe the stick is the wabajack uh if we talk to this guy um, let me check something real quick. Okay, I'm fine. Just looked weird today for some reason. Uh, if we talk to this guy, he just says, I'm busy doing the fish stick. It's a very delicate state of mind. He's busy doing the fish stick, uh, which I guess is something that somebody mad would say. Uh, you mind? I'm busy doing the fish stick. It's a very delicate state of mind. Yeah. So, um, this Webajack, I guess, what I'm holding in my hand here, does this. It, uh, shoots, uh... Something. Um... Oh! Good choice! Well, good for me. I find everyone being out to get you so terribly entertaining. <laughs> you might find it less so. So, he said good choice. You oh. see, Pelagius' mother was... Well, let us say, unique. Although I suppose, in the grand scheme of things, she was fairly average for a septum. That woman wielded fear like a cleaver. Or did she wield a cleaver and make people afraid? I never get that part right. Oh, but she taught her son well. Pelagius learned in a very early age that danger could come from anywhere, at any time, delivered by anyone. So, I just picked one of these stone things to walk through at random. Totally random. Uh, I don't know if there are all paths out of here. Um, if I have to go through all of them or if I've just chosen one. And this will get me out of here and I'm going to miss the other two. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if I could run back if I get scared or face a very tough enemy. I don't know. Um, I have no idea what's going to happen in here. But here's another one of these things. Oh, okay. Whoa. Uh, some kind of a... F did I step on something? Hmm. I'm not sure what happened there, but uh, for a short moment... Okay, there it is again. Okay, not sure what's going on here, but I don't particularly care for it. No, sir, I do not. Oh, oh. 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 I hear movement, and the music got scary. I'm going to have to either uh, punch with my left fist or use my wabajack to uh, shoot little tiny balls of light at things. The objective Whoa. here is simple, you simpleton. Use your wabajack to defeat the enemy while they do the same. Use my wabajack to defeat the enemy while they do the same. Can I do it from up here? Probably not, right? I probably actually... Well, actually... I can't seem to go down in there. Okay, I'm okay with that. Um... Uh... Hmm. Sit on the throne. Let's just sit and watch. I didn't even realize what I was wearing. Hmm. Um... Yeah, there appears to be a, uh... Invisible wall here. That is preventing me from, uh... Oh. Hmm. Your creature doesn't appear to be faring any better than before. I think trains oh. My creature? I have a creature? Uh, okay. I just got shot by that thing. So, um... This is Pelagius' flame thrall here. Um, okay. This over here... 
huh? Um, doesn't have a name, so does that mean... Well, well, this one doesn't have a name either. So which one of these things am I supposed to be... Oh, now they're... Oh, oh. Okay, now it's a Frost Thrall. What, what, I'm not sure what I'm fighting here. I wish they'd hold still so I could hit them. Uh, their health bar does not seem to be going down at all. Huh, okay. Well, um... No idea what the hell I'm doing here. Now it's a Flame Thrall. Uh, like I said, I can't jump down in there, so I'm, whatever I'm doing, I'm supposed to be doing it from here. Uh, I believe so. It doesn't look like there's any place else for me to go. So, um... What if I shoot one of these guys? Oh -ho! I thought you'd never figure it out! Okay. With the threat gone, Pelagius is under the delusion that he's safe, which means you helped him out. Sort of. And we're that oh. much closer to home. Okay, that guy just had to get one final shot off. Okay, well, I guess I figured it out, finger quotes. Um, I shot the, the spectators, and the spectators apparently made Pelagius uh, feel unsafe. And uh, now that the spectators are gone, uh, he feels safe now, so I can, I guess, head back. I guess. Didn't look like I could go forward there, so I guess we're gonna go back. Okay, now we're back here. I see you've been minding your own business. So, how is the mind business? Hmm. So his uh, paranoia is gone. Inside the mind of Pelagius, <laughs> silly. Oh, is it your first time? His paranoia is gone. Oh, lovely. Now, all my dear Pelagius has to worry about are the several hundred legitimate threats. But you're not out of the woods yet. Get it? Ah, out of the woods! Ah. Hilarious. Okay, Shiagarath, let's pick another one at random. Let's go to this one. You've headed down the path of dreams. Unfortunately for you, Pelagius suffered night terrors from a young age. Oh, that's it. Okay. Last time he had a whole speech. All you need to do is find something to wake our poor Pelagius up. You'll find his terrors easy to repel, but persistent. Okay, we need to find something to wake him up. Something to wake him up. Okay. So here he is. Hey, dude. Wake up. Okay, he's not going to wake up. My first thought is, get a bucket of water. That was my first thought. I cannot sleep in an unbed. I was wondering maybe if I crawled into bed with him, he would wake up. <laughs> Can't do that. Uh, I don't see... I mean, what if I gave him a good punch? I ought to do it. Okay. Oh. Oh. He's going back to bed. He's showing up as an enemy now. I'm not sure if I was supposed to punch him or not. <laughs> but apparently something is supposed to be persistent. Um. Okay, I'm not seeing anything around here to interact with, really. There's a stump here. Uh, here's some Mora Tapanella. Um, I can't do anything with my ingredients, and it's not like there's an alchemy table here, so I don't think there's anything I can do with that, although it is interesting that that was here. There's a butterfly flying around in here, too. I don't know. I had some butterfly wings. What happens if I shoot him? Okay, here comes the... Oh. Goat. Oh, look, it's a cute little goat. Okay. Hmm, that was interesting. What if I wake him up now? And he sees the goat. What 
What's up, dude? Oh, I'm out of stamina. So, the goat just kind of kneels before him. Sure is a cute goat. Okay. Oh, I think I hit the goat. Uh, okay, well, I don't know. Let's shoot him with this again. Oh. Never should have come here. Okay. Alright. Turned him into a child. Turned her into a child. So now we've got little Pelagius. Hi, little Pelagius. What's up? Trying to get somebody's attention. Well, talking to him certainly isn't the key. Oh, I missed. A Hagraven. That's pretty scary. Ooh, turned into a woman. This is, um, Sultry Maiden. Hello, Sultry Maiden. What you doing? Can't seem to talk to her. Okay, we've got a goat, we've got a little kid, we've got a sultry maiden. Should have waited. And that just totally dismissed that one. We got a fire over here. Huh, okay. Uh, so that last one disappeared, which makes, which makes me wonder if that one is not part... Whoa, whoa. Whoa. Ah, crap. There was a fourth thing over here that disappeared, but I don't know what it was. Maybe it was just the fire. Um, hmm. Well, let's uh, play around a little bit and see what happens here. Oh, I gotta... Do this again. Here comes the wolf again. Okay, we turned it into a goat. What happens if I shoot the goat again? Nothing. Okay. So we've got a goat. What's gonna wake him up? What if... I, um... Let the next thing show up. Looks like we got ourselves a Hmm. Okay. So we got her and a goat. Goat seems to be fighting her. Go Try and fight back. Okay, I hit him. Oh, and the bandit shows up again. Now the bandit is going to fight the goat, maybe. Okay. If I hit him again... Come on. Now that just keeps making her show up. Um... Ah. Hmm. So she's busy with the goat. Okay, he's not waking up. Um. Golly gee. It's the epic, this epic battle over here. Neither one of them have a health bar. Talk to the bandit chief. Nope, nothing. Shooting, shooting the goat. Does nothing. Okay, now she's a little kid. If I hit the little kid, nothing happens. If I punch the little kid, I can't seem to hit him. A goat, a kid, a sultry maiden, and a fire. Oh. Oh, what the? Okay, maybe there's a time limit on this stuff. Okay, here comes the wolf again. Damn it. Get off of him. Okay, the goat. Little kid. Sultry maiden. that thing. Fire. Hit him again. So 
like a... Uh... Well, now that's something to crow about. Oh, okay. With Pelagius up and about, you're moving right along. Okay. We'll both be home in no time. Oh, I can't search the chest. Doesn't seem as though I can search the chest. Oh, I uh, can't search it. What was that? Oh. The stuff I'm picking up, I don't know if I'm going to take it back to the real world or not. Yes. So, really, it was just a matter of doing it quickly. I'm all ears. Are you? You're not looking so good, dude. Okay, well, I guess that takes care of that. So that one was just a matter of... Uh, I was doing it right. I just needed to be quicker. So those were his dreams. What will be next? You alright, dude? I hope you're having a good time. Actually, I hope I'm having a good time. I could care less about you. Fair enough. No more night terrors. No more paranoia. Ah, so now, my dear Pelagius, can hate himself for being legitimately afraid of things that actually threaten his existence. But only during the day? Honestly, I can't keep up. But by all means, don't stop now! I'm not planning on it. Okay. And now we go to the final stone thingy. Ah! Now this is a sad path. Pelagius hated and feared many things. Assassins, wild dogs, the undead, pumpernickel. But the deepest, keenest hatred was for himself. The attacks he makes on himself can be seen here fully. They're always carried out on the weakest part of his fragile self. The self-loathing enhances Pelagius' anger. Ah, but his confidence will shrink with every hit. You must bring the two into balance. Okay. Must bring the two into balance. Get a good look at what we're wearing here. Some night clothes, I guess. Got our robe on and our little cap. Boy, he's tall. I feel very short. Golly. That's a, this is a big dude. Anger. So here's anger. And, um... just him. You seem to be having a small problem, or perhaps it's a big problem. Maybe if you shrunk the whole thing down a little first. I don't know. Need something. Yeah. This. Oh. Just punch him. Okay. Am I doing anything? about shrinking it down. I don't think he's getting any smaller. Okay. Alright, we reduced his anger, I guess. Gotta hit him in a weak location. I don't know, maybe. Now he's teensy tiny. His anger is very small now. Need something. <laughs> that would have been funny if his voice had changed. Okay, nothing happened that time. Cool. Oh. Self down. All ears. Yes. Okay. Got something to say? Nothing. Hmm. Well, I was supposed to make him the same size, but I didn't see these guys Got show up to say? until he was tiny. And if I could make him bigger, I don't know how to do it. This doesn't seem to be doing Got anything. Got something to say? Got something to say? Huh? Can't hit him. Huh? 
Hitting him in, in the head doesn't seem to be doing anything. Well, this is loads of fun. Is there somebody hiding around here that I don't see? Pretty sure it's just these two things that are supposed to even them out. But now that he's teensy tiny, I don't know how to make him bigger. Well, crap, I feel like I've screwed it up. Yes, huh? Do I need to start over? Can I start over? I need to make him the same size, but like I said, self doubt didn't seem to show up until after he was teensy tiny. What am I doing, dude? Nothing. No help from this guy. And uh, this does not look to have reset. Self doubt and anger. Can I punch him? Oh wow, I actually made him walk. Go over there. No idea what the hell I'm doing. Punching him doesn't seem to be doing anything. Got something to say? Self doubt doesn't have a um, health bar. Need something? Okay. Um. Well. I guess we're stuck here forever now. All ears. Uh. Yep. Okay. All right. Got something to say? They <laughs> watch my fist. Got something to say? I, I pickpocket anger. Interesting. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> my money's on the. Oh. Okay. Okay, now I'm fighting him. What the hell? This isn't be doing anything. Self. Whoa, where did anger go? Hey, watch what you're doing. Well, where did anger go? Okay. What the hell's going on? Um, is anger? Where the hell is anger? He's in this direction. What the hell? He ran all the way back here. Can't hide from me. Can't hide from me, he says. Dead and buried. Where are you going? What the hell? <laughs> Nothing I do seems to cause him any harm. I, I don't know, man. I was supposed to make these two things be in balance. And now he's just running away from me. Can I chase him back? can apparently go dude I don't know what the hell your problem is hitting him doesn't seem to do anything to him so now all I've done is aggroed him um, get away from the table dude dug your own grave he says go on go back here where self where self doubt is let's take him back here I don't think he's supposed to be way out here. No, no, don't go around. Ugh. No, come on, dude. 
Come on, man. Let's not make this more difficult than it has to be. No. No, 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 no. No, where you... Oh, where you... Oh, God, he's slippery. Well, he's just... Just running wherever the hell he wants to. These guys, I can't seem to do anything with. Nothing at all. I somehow managed to separate them, but I don't know what good that does. This doesn't seem to be doing anything. <sighs> Need something? Yes? Huh? I'm all ears. Golly, man. Um, I mean, there's got to be a way to fix this, right? I mean, to reset yes. it or something. There's got to be something I can do. This does nothing. Nothing at all. Nothing. So... Yes? I... I don't know, man. I don't know what the hell I'm supposed to be doing. Uh, if I've screwed it up... Well, like I said, it seems like there's got to be a way I could reset it so I could try again. So, I mean, and it, you know, let's face it, this game has a lot of glitches. So, got something to say? Right now, I don't know if I'm doing something wrong or if this is a glitch, you know? Okay, he's coming back. Yeah, come back, dude. Come here. Hey, watch what you're doing. Okay. At least he's coming back now. Oh, those fools are actually fighting. What? Come on. Those fools are actually fighting, said South Doubt. Why won't you die? Can't hit him. Well, he is pushing me away, man. Oh. When I hit him, he just runs away. It's like I hurt his feelings or something. Self-doubt says I'm getting out of here. We're well, gonna get out of here. Go, get out of here. <sighs> well, um, I mean, self-doubt seemed to be interested in us fighting for a moment, and one of them was like, I'm getting out of here. Dead and buried. Come and get me, bro. No, 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 come at me, bro. Ugh. So now my thought is, is that if self-doubt sees me fighting with anger, one of them was like, I'm gonna get out of here. So maybe if we got, if they saw us fighting, one of them would have left. But the problem is that I hit him, which I guess scared him away. And now I need to wait for him to come back uh, before I can... Uh... Oh, who the hell are you? Confidence. Need something? I'm all ears. Hide behind a freaking tree, dude? Never Punch you. Never should have come here. Wonderfully done. Pelagius is finally ready to love himself. Okay. And continue hating like a horse. Well, if you say so. So am I done? Is this it? Man, I didn't see that guy hiding behind that freaking tree. What the hell? Got something to say? No, I don't. I have nothing to say to you. Well, it only took me, what, 20 minutes? Nah, it didn't take me that long, but geez. Dude hiding behind a freaking tree. All right, I did it. Let me out of here. I have a saying. I'm not going to feel what you have to like. Or something like that. <laughs> okay. I've done it. I've fixed his mind. Inside Ugh. the mind of Pelagius, silly. Oh, is it your Pelagius? All right, hold on. Now. That was my bit. Surely. Inside oh, the mind. Oh, for gosh sakes. Oh, is it your first time? Hmm. Fixed is such a subjective term. I think treated is far more appropriate, don't you? Like one does to a rash or an arrow in the face. Ah, but no matter. 
heartless mortal that you are, you've actually succeeded and survived. I am first to honor my end of the bargain. So, congratulations. You're free to go. I have been known to change my mind. So, go. Really. Okay. How do I go? Pelagius Septum the Third, once the mad emperor of Tamriel, now so boringly sane. I always knew he had it in him. Well, I suppose it's back to the Shivering Isles. A trouble Haskell can get into while I'm gone simply boggles the mind. Let's make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Clothes, check. Beard, check. Luggage. Luggage. Now, where did I leave my luggage? Master, you've taken me back. Does this mean we're going home? Oh, happy times. I can't wait to... Yes, yes, that's quite enough celebration. Let's send you ahead, shall we? As for you, my little mortal minion, feel free to keep the Wabajack. As a symbol of my... I'll just take the damn thing. You take care of yourself now. And if you ever find yourself up in New Sheo, do look me up. We can share a strawberry tart. Ha <laughs> ha! Ta-ta! Okay, we have completed the Mind of Madness. Oh, there we go. Back to the Pelagius wing, no doubt. And here we are. Hey, Lydia, what you been doing while I was gone? All right, well, what does our quest say now? Oh, that's it. We completed it. The Mind of Madness. I have helped... Dervinin by convincing his master Shiagarath to return from vacation inside the mind of Pelagius. Shiagarath has rewarded me with the Wabajack for my troubles. Ooh, the Wabajack. Boy, it sure did seem awesome, didn't it? Uh, Wabajack. Uh, a blast from Wabajack with an unpredictable effect. It sure is worth a lot. Huh. I don't know. We could play around with that, I guess. See what it does, maybe. Oh, it's all boarded up. Cool. Um, oh. It's down here. Surfeit of Thieves. Lydia, come on, I want you to, yeah, come here, Lydia. I want you to pick this book up for me, will you? Come on, you know I can't touch books I haven't read yet. Oh, what the? Hmm? Oh, I guess that thing fell on me here. Lydia? Yes, my thing? Pick that up. Okay, got it. Thank you. Thank you, Lydia. Anything else? You're very helpful. Little bed down here. Oh, another book. Lydia. Oh. Thief of Virtue. Yes, my thing? Okay, got it. Okay. Anything else? What was the book that I just had her pick up? I'm right behind you. I am sworn to carry your burdens. Oh, surfeit of thieves and thief of virtue. Not even close. Lead on. Uh, any potions down here for me that I could pick up? Um, just a bunch of wine and mead, it looks like. Yeah, just a bunch of storage. And I guess this is a dead end. This is it for down here. Alright, let's head back up. I was like, how do I get out of here? <laughs> I couldn't remember. Okay, back to the Blue Palace we go. Um, hmm. She's making me nervous the way she's standing there. Erdy. Who's Erdy? Oh, hello. Just tidying up. Oh, yeah? Okay. Are you my gallant hero? Have you come to whisk me away to a life of adventure and romance? Sure. Go on, let's go. I made a wish in the town well that a golden knight came to take me to his castle. Oh, does it spoil the wish if I tell? <laughs> well, I'm still wearing this outfit. I have an idea that might help to bolster the morale of our people in this difficult time. 
I think we shall have a grand parade and let General Tullius march his troops from the Blue Palace to Castle Dower in all their finery. What a fine idea, my Yara. However, I would suggest we wait until uh, the war has ended. After all, the General needs his soldiers out in the field, fighting battles against the Stormcloaks. I must protest, my Yara. A parade would make you an easy target for a Stormcloak assassin. You're safer here in the palace. Oh, very well. I can see there's no changing your stubborn Nord minds. But when this war is won, I will have my parade. Yes, my Yara. Have we spoken to Bearclaw? Oh, yeah. Address all questions to the steward, Folk Firebeard. Yeah, we did. Okay. Um, well, I mean, we did that little quest there. If you have business, please see Falk Firebeard, my steward. With the passing of my dear husband, Torek, the weighty position of Jarl has fallen to me. Mm -hmm. Please direct questions to my steward. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have business with the court? Mm, I guess I don't. Feel free to return to me with questions. The Blue Palace is an open forum. Okay. Well, I mean... I guess that's it. Thane Bryling, at your service. Oh, she's a Thane. How many Thanes are here? I can always find time to share a word with a warrior. Can you? Many condemn the Stormcloaks, but I refuse. There is honor in fighting for what you believe. Hmm. This godforsaken war is dividing our people and destroying our land. Yeah, what else? Need something? No, that's all. Over here we've got... Una. Watch your feet. We just clean there. She's the the grumpy one. Um, there's still somebody around here who I haven't talked to. Steward, when is my appointment to meet with General Tullius? There are some issues we must speak about. I'm afraid he's had to reschedule, my grace. By all accounts, waging war takes his every moment. Again. He can't simply cancel an appointment with a Jarl. He serves in my capital city. I'm afraid he can. His authority comes from the Emperor, who you also serve, Jeez. technically. He uses all of Hafingar's resources and doesn't answer to me in the slightest? This hardly seems fair. Fair is a word rarely applied to politics, my grace. I'm afraid you must learn to accept this. Hmm, okay. Isn't there like an Ericus or something like that around here? Who I believe is another Thane? Uh, who's this? Oh, this is, uh, Sib... What's... Sibyl. We already talked to her. Um... Here's this, uh, Arcane Enchanter again. Um... Let's look at my... Let's look at level up. Uh, let's put our points into Magicka here. And, um... I'm going to go over to smithing here. Take a look at smithing. Smithing. It doesn't look like there's anything I could do in smithing, judging by the color of the stars. Steel smithing. Dwarven smithing. Orcus. Arcane blacksmith. This is the one that will allow me to improve magical weapons and armor. So I'm not going to be able to do that until I get uh, level 60 here. Um... So the reason I wanted to look at this was because, I think in the last episode, I talked about enchanting my armor. But if I enchant my armor, then I won't be able to upgrade it anymore. Um, now, is there another level of armor above superior? I don't know. I need to get to a um, workbench and see if there's another level higher than that, so... That's something that I need to do. Why was... Why was Sabeel sleeping at 3.49 p.m.? So, um... No, um... No talk about becoming a Thane. No talk about buying a house or property or anything. Nothing like that at all here. Uh, so... I guess... I don't know, man. I guess we're just going to go back outside and walk around a little bit, I guess. I don't know why I'm wearing my my little robes here. Fine clothes, fine hat, fine shoes. I mean, 
I don't remember this being uh, what that person gave me. Yeah, that was Radiant Raiment fine clothes. But hey, at least I got some fine shoes now. I'm not walking around barefoot anymore. So at least I got that going for me. The Imperials oh, are good for business, and business is good for Skyrim. This is who I was looking for. Ryling's obsession with honor and tradition is quaint, but politically irrelevant. Hey man, what's your position in the court? I'm a Thane. In the future, you may want to gain that information before talking with someone. Risk of looking like an idiot and all that. It doesn't bother me. Do all of the Thanes support Elisif? Oh, most certainly. At least when Elisif herself asks. <laughs> If you're inquiring whether we have concerns about her age and inexperience, uh, let me put it this way. The Thanes have every confidence in General Tullius's leadership. Oh, okay, well he sure put it. I must return to the court. They simply can't make do without me. Okay, well, um... Oh, hello. Just tidying up. Oh, uh, yeah, looks like it. it. Totally looks like you're tidying up. Um... Well, uh, so much for my plan of coming here and buying property. Um, Sibyl Stentor has a grasp of magical theory that I would never have expected from a human, even a Breton. No doubt most folk in Skyrim consider the dragons terrifying. Mm -hmm. I find them wondrous. Oh, more talking up here. Oh, okay. They're talking about that again. Uh, I guess I'm just going to go back outside. Uh, back out into solitude here, and I don't know, be on my way. Actually, hmm. maybe if I do the quest that they asked me to do, which was um, specifically clear out Wolf Skull Cave, uh, maybe I get on Falk Firebeard's good side if I do that. Before we do that, let's walk back to. Uh, Terry here. Oh, you need to tell this person this, and this person this, and uh, these are things that I believe are taking place here in Solitude. Not Solitude, Blue Palace over here. Hmm, I'm not showing any markers. Did I forget to turn this on? I did. Yeah, they're both here. Okay, let's, um, let's complete both of these little quests gone, gone. here. Vampire hunt. Beautiful day here in solitude. Very nice. Who's this guy? Gotta keep my eyes open. Oh, Ernsker. Unless we have specific down business, at any time. I'm not interested. I'm supposed to tell you something, dude. When I was a young rascal, Aren't I, I broke a man's arm with a single punch. Of course, I had a horseshoe hidden in my glove. Uh, oh no, he was the guy that I talked to. Oh, okay. That's right, I need to go back to Octiev. Okay. I got it. What is it? Dragons? Mm -hmm. It's dragons. It's always dragons, dude. Ooh, I like this stuff, the nightshade. Oh, here's a little... wine for the winking skeever? Actually, just a bottle for me today. I'm thinking of giving it to Vivian. Sure, Sorex. Just like you did the last one. The last the one was a warm-up. The Divines saved me from the streets, and they can save you from your trials as well. Really? May the Divines guide and keep you. Don't mind me. I'm just running errands for the old man. Hmm. So you uh, work at the Winking Skeever, huh? Not too bad. Work in it. I own it. Well, okay. My father owns the Winking Skeever, but it's the family business, so it'll be mine when he kicks off. Yeah? You were at the execution, right? I showed up to watch, yeah. I don't know if they were right to execute him for what he did, but I'll tell you something. It couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. The uh, hell's that supposed to mean? It seems rather harsh. Listen, Rogvir and I grew up together. It was us, a few others, and Vivian. Vivian Onus. None of what he collected. I have no idea why, but one day I told Rogvir I liked her. 
was a stupid thing to do. He mocked me incessantly after that. From that point forward, every time Vivienne and I were anywhere close to each other, he made sure to humiliate me. He beat me up, dumped mead on my head, anything he could get away with. Once he even slipped a beehive into my bed. We were children, sure, but Rogvir never outgrew that immaturity or his cruelty. So any talk about him being an honorable Nord? <laughs> Pure folly. Okay, so he, he it sounds like he totally deserved to have his head chopped off. Who's in charge around here anyway? Jarl Elisif the Fair. Poor woman. Keep Losing her husband and king like that. It was a dark day for us all. Mm. Damn. That reminds me. I have a delivery to make to her steward, Falk Firebeard. He ordered a special bottle of Strauss Mackay rum. Spiced wine. Oh, really? Uh, I can deliver that for you. Save me a lot of trouble. Here. Take it to the Blue Palace. Yeah, it's too bad we didn't meet him earlier. Could have taken care of that while we were there. But it's not far away. I was done talking anyway. Yeah, I'm sure you were. Hello, Yvette San. You wouldn't have a few minutes to run down to the docks, would you? Uh, what do you need from the docks? Well, I've got a shipment of spices the East Empire Company is holding up. I need someone to convince them to release it. Hmm. Well, shouldn't be a problem. Great. Get back to me when you're done and I'll give you something for your time. Cool. Alright. Uh, so how are sales? Oh, very brisk. When the snow sets in, even the hardiest Nord needs some spiced wine to warm the blood. Mm hmm Yeah. So is your spiced wine made from a secret recipe? Oh, yes. A secret family recipe. The only good thing my father Octiev ever did. In fact, it's so good, no one else in Skyrim even tries to make any. Wow, and all of Skyrim? What are you selling? Take a look. Yeah, a bunch of crap. Nothing I'm interested in. Okay. Good luck out there. Well, oh. Seems like a tough time to be wandering Skyrim. Eh, it's fine. You know, the Winking Skeever's not just the best inn in Solitude. It's also the only inn in Solitude. Oh, good one, Sorex. Lady Atia says my voice is second only to hers. Mm -hmm. But she's selling me short. Oh, okay. Don't mind me, I'm just running errands for Okay, you, you guys. Okay. Uh, so, let us, um... Let's see here. I was wondering if there was a place I could sit down. There was a chair somewhere. Well, we'll just go over here. Uh, so, I'm going to end this episode here, but of course, before I leave, uh, I'm going to read a book. Uh, those of you who do not stick around for the book, uh, make sure you remember to leave a like or a comment. I sure would appreciate that. Those of you who are ready to uh, hear me read a book, I'm going to talk to Lydia here, back. and uh, we're going to pick up the books that she took in uh, the Pelagius wing, Pelagius wing. How can I serve you, my thane? Take these. And go into our inventory here. And we're going to read... Let's see here. There's Thief of Virtue. Let's read Thief of Virtue. That sounds pretty good, right? Here we go. Thief of Virtue. Let me tell the tale of the Thief of Virtue. In the land of Hammerfell, in the city of Such, there lived a baron who was quite wealthy. He was a noted collector of rare coins. The Baroness Veron Veronic uh, Veronique found the whole thing quite tedious. However, she did appreciate the lifestyle that the Baron's wealth provided. Ravius Tyrinus was a noted thief. He claimed to be a master thief in the mythical guild of thieves. However, that was mostly, most likely just braggadocio. The only known thieves guild was wiped out over 450 years ago. Ravius decided that the Baron should share his wealth. Specifically, he should share it with Ravius. The wily thief crept into the Baron's castle one night, intending to do just that. The walls of the castle were noted for their height and unscalability. Ravius cleverly used an arrow of penetration to affix a rope to the top of the battlements. Once on the battlements, he had to evade the Baron's guards. By hiding in the shadows of the crenellations, he was able to work his way to the keep undetected. Entering the keep was child's play for a thief of his caliber. However, a cunning lock with no less than 13 pins protected the private quarters of the Baron. Ravius broke only nine lockpicks to open it. Using only a fork, a bit of string, and a wine skin, he disabled the seven traps guarding the Baron's coin collection. Truly, Ravius was a master among thieves. With the coins safely in his grasp, Ravius began his escape only to find the way blocked. 
The Baron had found the open door and was raising the guard to scour the castle. Ravius fled deeper into the castle, one step ahead of the questing guards. His only way out led through the boudoir of Baroness Veronique. He entered to find the lady preparing for bed. Now it should be said at this point that Ravius was noted for his handsome looks, while the Baroness was noted for her plainness. Both of these facts were immediately recognized by each of the pair. Dost thou come to plunder my virtue? asked the lady, all a-tremble. Nay, fair lady, Ravius said, thinking quickly, plunder be a harsh term to ply upon such a delicate flower as your virtue. I see thou, thou hast made off with mine husband's precious coins. Ravius looked deeply into her eyes and saw the only path by which he would escape this night with his life. It would require a double sacrifice. Though these coins are of rarest value, I have now found a treasure that is beyond all value, Ravius said smoothly. Tell me, O beauteous one, why dost thy husband set seven deadly traps around these tawdry coins, but only a simple lock upon the door of his virtuous wife? Ignace protects those things that are dearest to him, Veronic replied with ire. I would give all the gold in my possession to spend but a moment basking in your radiance. With that, Ravius set down the coins he had worked so hard to steal. The Baroness swooned into his arms. When the captain of the guard asked to search her quarters, she hid Ravius most skillfully. She turned over the coins, claiming the thief dropped them when he fled out the window. With that sacrifice made, Ravius steeled himself for the second. He robbed the Lady Veronique of her virtue that night. He robbed her of it several times, lasting well into the wee hours of the morning. Exhausted yet sated, he stole away in the pre-dawn hours. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thief of virtue indeed. All right. I enjoyed that. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, why don't you let me know. Let me a like or a comment. Thanks for watching. Sure if you join me again in the next episode.